Hi everyone, it's John Boone Thomas here. A few questions for you. Would you like to loosen up? Do you want to have some fun? And do you want to produce an original painting? Then if the answer is yes, then this lesson is for you. Uh, we're going to be painting with brush -o today and I'm going to show you how to produce a really colourful gecko using the techniques I use when painting with brush -o. So if you're interested, let's get started. So here's the gecko uh, that we're going to paint today. And the beauty of brush -o is that whatever I paint today will not look like what you paint today. A hundred people could paint this subject and every picture would be just slightly different. And I think that's something uh, that to, to really like about brush -o is the fact that, you know, you can create some really original work. I've got the drawing down. Before we get started with anything, uh, I want to show you a couple of other little things, but let's just go back to the drawing. It's a nice, simple drawing. I've used a nice, soft 3B pencil to draw that onto my paper. Uh, there are lots of free images on the internet. Uh, you'll find lots of little uh, gecko pictures uh, that you can use royalty free, uh, or you can use mine here. It's a very simple shape with no detail whatsoever because we're going to let the brush -o do the work. Uh, okay, and another thing before we get started as well, I've chosen these three colours. Uh, let's just have a look on our little scrap of paper, you can see that. Let's just have a look what they look like together. So a little bit of that yellow, a smidge of the red and a smidge of the blue and we'll just drop water. Look at that. That's just beautiful already, isn't it? Just dropping water into those colours and look how they're blending together. The yellow and the blue are giving us a gorgeous green and the yellow and the red are giving us an orange. Delicious. So those colours are gonna work really, really well with our picture. We're gonna use some wax resist and don't be too heavy handed with this. It's a little bit of candle wax. Uh, it's just so we can retain some nice lights perhaps or put some nice patterns onto our gecko. Once the wax is done on the paper, it isn't coming off. So be, don't be you know, too heavy handed with it. Uh, let's start by maybe putting some little circular shapes down his back. I'm not pressing very hard. I'm making little swirly movements. We can come down to the tail. I mean, it is your picture. You can do whatever you like. Maybe a little smidge here in the eyes. What about some little dots? Again, I know I'm making a noise and it sounds like I'm pressing quite hard, but I'm not actually. Just put in a few little dotty marks every now and again. Uh, you could put some around his little feet and hands, maybe. That is probably enough. I mean, I do say, <laughs> don't go crazy. So yeah, someone take the wax off. Of... Okay, so we'll, we'll stop at that point. Uh, and now we are ready to start to create this wonderful, uh, exciting, colorful gecko. And I hope you're excited because I am. Let's get started. Nice clean water, our oh, lovely number eight brush, we've put the wax down. Now let's look at how we can create this lovely texture. Uh, I've used brush over years and I, I realise there's so many different ways to use it, but I think this is one of the most exciting ways and it's the simplest way. We're gonna wet areas of the gecko's body. So we'll start with the head. Maybe let's just drop a few little bits into his stubby little fingers. Are they called fingers? Do geckos have fingers? <laughs> I have no idea. Okay, so we'll just do that top half. And what colours are we going to use? Uh, we know we're going to use the three primers, obviously, and we've seen how beautiful they are. Look at that. Just gorgeous colours all mixed together. So let's start with a little tiny tap of the red. Don't get too heavy handed. Can you see it comes out very quickly? Okay, let's, let's put a bit of 
yellow into that. Might have to give this a, a good shake. Doesn't want to come out. Sometimes they get a little bit clogged, so I just get a pencil and just push the hole in a little bit more. There we go. Didn't want to come out with a little tub. Let's just tap a little bit of blue into that. The blue is quite strong. You'll get to know your brush over the more you play with it. The blue is, is quite intense. Uh, so really go sparingly with that. So here we wet the paper and we sprinkle the brush on. Here what we can do is sprinkle the brush on and just run our brush into that. And again, let those colours mingle. And of course, you've still got room to put more brush into these areas. So it's just, look how it jumps everywhere as well. It's everywhere, isn't it? Crazy stuff. Kind of nice. I'd like a bit more red into that, so I'm going to put some more reds into his little body. I love the way that does that. Look at this lizardy kind of texture we're getting, it's just so nice. I'm going to wet the tail. We'll end up little picking up little bits of brush up. Can you see it's jumped into the picture? Now, the one thing I didn't mention, which is very naughty of me, when I did the material list was a bit of kitchen roll is always handy. You can see we've got these drips here and we're not quite ready for that yet. So we just push the tissue into the paper and that's kind of sealing it as well. It's sealing that colour into the paper. Just re like this. Brusho, by the way, is very much like watercolour. It does not like being rubbed and rubbed and rubbed. So you've got to keep cleaning your brush as you put the colour in. I'm just going to give my yellow another little poke. There we go. Look how the blue and the yellow are creating that gorgeous green. I feel the need for just a little smidge of red into that. And again... We can just lift off some colour just by dabbing this tissue on here. Now you can see here I use the purples and the reds and the green. Here I'm using three primaries, but I'm still getting those lovely colours. I'm not getting the purple, uh, but I'm getting the, the reds with the oranges. I'm getting the yellows with the blues to create the green. So it's all good I feel we need a little bit more texture here. So I'm going to re-wet that and put some more yellow into it. Now you can see there are areas that, that I haven't quite managed to wet. So we can manipulate that brush oh now and just move it around with our brush. Cleaning the brush, always cleaning the brush. Just giving it a bit more kind of substance. And of course, now you can start to see the little waxy marks that we put on earlier. Any more? Yeah, we could do a little bit here, couldn't we? Keep cleaning that brush. I love the way you can kind of just move it around on the paper. Do we need any more? I'm tempted to just do a little tiny bit of sprinkling up here. And this is why our pictures will be so different from one another. Because you just can't predict what's going to happen sometimes. But it's looking really nice. Okay, so just lifting those bits off again. Now you can see the paper's wet. There's a lots of brush on the paper. The last thing you want to do here is, is to put a hairdryer on your work. Don't do that. 
uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to let it just dry naturally. If you put the hairdryer on, you're going to blow all that brush out everywhere, all over your work surfaces, and you're not going to be happy. So just let it dry naturally for a little, for just a few minutes, and then we can just tap all the little extra bits off. You'll never get rid of them all, by the way, but I've learned not to fight them because actually they end up being the nicest part of your picture. So let's let it dry, and then we can do the final stages. Okay, so our gecko is nice and dry now. I like the colour combinations that we've got, by the way. I mean, you can use any colour you like, so it's it's worth experimenting with colours that you might find exciting. Uh, I love the way we've created the texture just by sprinkling that brush o into wet wash and how we've managed to move it around so we've got smoother areas going into these textured areas. And all the while, these little waxy bits just, just giving us that little bit of interest. Uh, now, you can tidy up as much as you like. I mean, I have thought about adding a shadow to this, but I'll, I'll, I'll leave that till later uh, for another time, perhaps. But what I want to show you is, let's go back to this one uh, that I did on holiday. Uh, it's very loose and you can see there's lots of drips involved. I like a good drip. Uh, if you don't and you're happy with your gecko, how he is, that's fine because he does look rather splendid. Uh, but if you want to be a little bit bolder and try this, then go for it. Uh, we're going to be moving our board around a little bit. I'm tapping our board and moving it like this. Uh, and we're just going to do this in the simplest of ways. As I said before, there's probably little speckles of brush oil already on that paper that you can hardly see. Uh, let's find out. So I'm going to wet the brush and I'm going to just tap it into that area and I'm going to allow that colour come on to slide down if, if I don't like where it's going of course I can just give it a little mop isn't that nice you've got this lovely drippy sensation let's do it here as well I'll just tap that so we're just moving that brush around a little bit he looks all sticky and slimy, doesn't he? Let's do it here. So just push the brush in and then we're just allowing for those lovely kind of drippy marks down our paper. It, it does help if you kind of tip your board up a little bit as well, obviously. And I'm going to tap into the tail as well. Just let that colour explode a little bit out of the lines. Now, if that doesn't loosen you up, nothing else will. <laughs> Tissue for little bits you're not liking very much. Just lift them away a little bit. You'll still see them, but they're not as pronounced. Uh, there are other options with this, by the way. You could lift off a lot of the colour that you don't like using bleach. But I'm going to save that for another lesson if you've not used bleach before. And I rather like him. I hope you like yours. Uh, have a go. Try different colour combinations. Be brave with the splattering. And hopefully we'll produce an original piece of work uh, using brush -o. I hope you've enjoyed that and I'll see you next time.